Hello, hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Hello, hello good evening. How is it going this beautiful Wednesday? Really good, man. Nice, nice to hear, nice to hear. That is very nice to hear. Richard, do you know where is the deadline to hand in the document? You know, usually, I, I misplaced my phone again. Oh, wow. Let me see. Let me see. Let me try to get it. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, guys. Let me, you know what? They send an email. Let me go ahead and check for you guys. I know that it's still a little bit... Let me see. Hmm. Henry, Henry, we got you with the problems. 3.5, my friend. Welcome nice, aboard. Thank you. Don't worry, we got you. We're going to send you guys some of that. Nice, nice. Nice progress, by the way. Nice progress, by the way. Let me see here. This, March this 26. <laughs> March 26? Yes. I just saw the message. Okay, yeah, that's the one that I was looking for, Raf. Yeah, so you guys have you guys have some time. I know it seems like they're telling you guys to come to come on, hurry up. But uh, one of the biggest issues that we've had, I, I think, over time is just that the longer we take with the documents, the longer it takes for everybody to start. And so that's when that's when I think the issues come up. Um, so let me let me go ahead and uh, March 26. Let me go ahead and put that on the chat. Let me go ahead and put that one on there. Let me see where you guys are at. March 26. So that's around the corner. We are March. Yeah, that's like 10 days, nine days, nine days away. So you could say that it's going to be, you know, Thursday, Friday, and then the weekend, and then the week of training. And then that's pretty much it. Where did they, did they send that to the group? I don't know. I received a personal message. Yeah, they did. Okay. I found one. You know what? They did send one. They said, así dice, dice, les recuerdo que cada módulo debe aprobarse cumpliendo con el 80% de calificación final en plataforma más tardar el jueves de esta semana, que sería el 18 de marzo. So the 18th of March, which is tomorrow. Now, uh, has anybody in the class well, reached? Finish tomorrow. Has anybody? Well, no, you don't have to finish. You have to reach 80%. Oh my God, That's I what I understand. But <laughs> that, is, that is because of the documents because they're going to start to prepare the documents for the next module. So what she's saying is, what they're saying is, look, let me see if you guys can see it. Well, almost, right? Ah, no, se ve, no se ve muy bien, pero. Uh, so they started sending messages and they're asking for documentation for the next module. So they tell you what you know what to do to what what needs to be printed out, what needs to be sent out, and then once all the documentation is in, then they proceed to enroll you in the next module. So in order for the enrollment, to take place, then you guys have to have the eighty percent, 
and then you receive a confirmation. So, so what I remember from last modules or the last classes is that they don't give you a, they don't say, okay, you have been enrolled. They don't give you a confirmation until you get to that 80%. It's not that you don't get enrolled. It's just that they don't send a confirmation until you have that 80%. So what you're saying, if what they're saying is if you guys want that confirmation of that enrollment, then have the 80% of that module completed in order for you guys to be able to do that. All right. So that, that one is that. I think that one they sent to the group at 11.50 a.m. So if you guys already kind of went through the group WhatsApp, go back a little bit to, uh, it's a, from Licenciada Elena, and she, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty big message. All right. Okay, okay. All right, everybody, hello, hello. Well, if we were in the our work environment, I remember we got all the way up to three. Section Teacher. number three. Yes, Madeline. Uh, good evening. You didn't send me the information and you didn't join me in the group. No, because you were gonna send me, you were gonna write to me on WhatsApp. Yes. So I, that you I can was, give me. I was so that, writing. Uh, in your, in your, to yeah, my I sent you a mail. Oh my mail. goodness, I'm so let me check, let me check, Maddie. Teacher, yes, um, I'm sorry. Um, you said that the deadline so we can finish, or so, I mean, so we can reach at least 80% is tomorrow, right? It's, but, uh, yeah, so what there's what. What the admin is saying is that they're going to start asking you for the documentation. Because, okay. for example, the message that I received doesn't have a deadline, so we can get so we can get at least eighty percent, and and it gives me the deadline, so I can uh, hand in the documents on March twenty sixth. So. Well, the thing is that it's, so the way that they had it set up before, let me go ahead, let me show you, let me show you where I, what I have. Uh, let me see, let me see, where is it, where is it, there it is. Can you guys see my screen? This is what we're gonna cover today, woohoo. Yes, sir. Right. And this is the calendar. So this is how we stand, Raf. We are on Wednesday. Oh, happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Quienes vinieron de verde, a ver. A ver, quienes vinieron de verde. All right. All right. Yo un parcito de Heineken ahí. Ah, pues sí, porque es el día de San Patricio. Entonces, somebody has to do it. Um, so we're Wednesday the 17th. Week number three finishes tomorrow on the 18th. And then we start week number four on the 22nd. And then we go 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th. So that means that all the work on the platform has to be completed by the 25th. Oh, yeah. that's, that's the rule. And then that's why it tells you that on the 26th, ahí es como el corte. Right, that, that's it, it's over on the 26th. Now, what's happening is that because of the documentation, because it takes us so long to kind of get it together, get it approved, get everybody certified, they are asking for it one week in advance. So you, okay. can, you, you can look at it that way. And what they're saying is be at least to 80% by Thursday, and that way we can enroll you in the next module. And so that's the idea, even though we still have a whole week to go. Okay. Yo lo que me imagino que han de decir, Raf, si se los pedimos el 25. <laughs> I imagine they're, they're Salvadorian. <laughs> Yo, right, yeah, yeah. We're, you know, we're from El Salvador. We don't, we don't work that way. We don't work that way. 
Okay, Maddie, and, and so here is my email. Look at Maddie, I don't have you, I don't have an email from you. I have one from Delmi, I have one from uh, Chalo. Let me see. I don't think it has gone to spam. I don't have anybody on spam. I definitely don't throw anything in there, right? So I put it in the chat, Madeline, so that you can resend it. I, I sent you, I sent you yesterday at okay. night. So let's do something in the chat. If you can do it, can you put your email address and I'll send you an email right now so that you can send a reply. What, what happened to me? Send I don't know. In the chat. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Robert Martinez. Robert Martinez, Robert. 81 at Gmail. I, I sent you. Okay, what happened? I don't know what happened. That's okay, that's okay. No worries, no worries. We'll get it right now. We'll get it and I'll send it to you. And then in that email, once you give me that email, put give your phone again, number your there. email, please. Sure, sure. Uh, Robert Martinez81 at gmail.com. George, I don't have I don't have you here. Let me see here. Let's let's see if we have it. All right. JM nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yes, George. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, you, you know, I thought I ran out of <laughs> JM nobody at Gmail. Here we go. Test. And there you go. Whoa, what, what happened? What happened? Message was sent. Let me see. Sent. There it is. I think I must have clicked on something. <laughs> a ver, aquí va. Test, test, test. Ojo ahí. And that's ALX, uh, ALX.ADN at gmail.com, right, Henry? Okay. Mary, el chat. Tell me, teacher. Your email. Give me your email so I can send you an email. Or are you going to send me the email automatically? I, I got, sent there you. There we go, George. I got George already. Thank you. Robert.com? No, no. Robert Dimas, Robert. 81. Robert. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. You've been saying, I'm so sorry, Maddie. Maddie, Maddie I'm so sorry. Robert. What happened? We sure? Well, the thing is that I have so many emails that I use. This is the correct one. This is the correct one. Robert Dimas, Robert 81. Dimas. 81. Uh, no, teacher, you told me Robert Martinez, 80. <laughs> no, 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 80, 81. I'm sorry, Maddie. I'm sorry. Yes, Dimas, I got confused. It's, it's, That's my okay. fault. Go <laughs> uh, no. Robert Dimas. I know, teacher. What, Mira, what y hay, hay un Roberto Martinez saying, ¿Y quién es Madeline? ¿Y quién es Ma Somebody's going to get in trouble. <laughs> I'm, so so I'm so sorry, Madeline. I'm so sorry. Robert Dimas, 81. Friend, imagine. <laughs> imagine, Raph. Imagine you get an email y de repente tu esposa lo ve. ¿Y quién es esta Madeline? Y vos ahí va de, va de escribir. ¿Y, ¿Y quién es? Hola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert it sounds like Dimas, something. Robert, Robert Martinez, I wrote. I I'm know. so sorry. I'm so sorry, man. Robert Dimas 81 at Gmail. Okay. I apologize. There we go. I got. All right. There we go. Henry got you. Got you. I got you. I got you. And then, so as soon as you send it, I'll 
keep it here and I'll start and that way I know where it is. Look at this one. I since you guys are looking at the at the emails, um, I signed but you up for. Have, teacher, but you yeah. have the Mierazo. Yeah, and you told us, uh, Martinez. No, the thing is that originally I had I had given the correct one. I had used Robert Dimas eighty one at gmail dot com, and then I think that within the conversations I changed it and I swapped it, and I'm sorry about that, Madeline. And then, but but I was able to. We were able to kind of give it, give it, get it out there. So uh, Delmi and Chalo asked for the presentation very early on. And then George, we just did right now. Henry, we just did now. And then as soon as I get yours, I will be able to see it here as well. Which presentation? I don't know about the, the that. The big, large presentation. The presentation that we've been. We have one that we've been putting together where in, we include all of these. Look, well, I don't know. Yeah, like that. You see how it's we have- It's not a hom homework. No, no, it's not, it's not homework. Mm. Oh, yes. I still test Jarvin. Let's see how that comes out. Thank you, teacher. Ya tu sabe. All right. You all right. already know. You already know. Hello, Luis. How you doing, sir? Luis Enrique. Uh, Josue, buenas. Ricardo, hello, hello. Diana, creo que no las había saludado. Alexander, no las había saludado. Hello. All right, I'll leave it. I'll leave it open like that. And then once again, if you guys put your emails on here, I'll send you a test email. And then that way I can send you guys the presentation for the pronunciation. There's a, there's a few more things that we can do. Um, there are some exercises for you to actually work on your pronunciation and conversation skills. So, um, that we're gonna we're we're gonna also merge together, and so hopefully you guys will be able to take advantage of that. Um, going back to the platform, guys. Let me go ahead and bring it up here, and we'll we'll go and go through it real quick. Uh, section number three takes us back a little bit because we start off with the use of relative and non-relative clauses. Okay. Now, what I wanted to do is kind of go back and, and talk to you guys about clauses in general. Like, where does that term come from? What does it mean? And then um, gradually work our way down to non-defining and um, defining relative clauses. So it's actually, this one is uh, relative and non-relative clauses. But eventually you guys will get to one that says defining and non-defining, which is also another term that you guys can, you guys will be able to see. Um, the videos are pretty short, less than two minutes long. They talk a little bit about this. They give you some information on how it works. Um, and the reason behind the videos being so short and the explanations also being like that is because it, it has been a, I'm, I'm going to say that it's a module or it's a topic that has been broken down into many little pieces and that, you know, depending on how many modules you've been taking, you, you have seen this over and over and over and over again. Um, for example, in, in the modules that I've been delivering, I think that, um, out of the, let me see, two, four, six, eight, and you guys are nine. Out of the nine, I think there's only one class where we didn't touch up on um, relative clauses. Everything else, or in every other class, we saw it in one way, one format, or another. So uh, what I like to do is I like to make sure that we all start at the same level and then kind of work our way um, through it. So uh, let, me, let me go ahead and do that right quick. Um, as you guys can see, the first exercise 
or the first module that you guys see is 3.1, which is the definition of a non-defining relative clause. And then, so here you see both, right? You see the um, non-defining relative clauses and the defining relative clauses. And so with that, we start off with explaining what a clause is in general, right? So let me go ahead and this one is real quick read. Let's start off with a clause, right? This is the general version of what a clause is or the general explanation that you guys will see. Um, another thing that you guys will notice that in each of the topics, they focus on specific topics. And what I like to do is I like to generalize it because in order for you guys, if you wanna Google something, for example, and you grab what you're being taught and you put it in Google or you put it in any of the search engines, sometimes you don't get a hit because uh, the terms that are being used, sometimes they don't, they don't really match, right? Um, so what I like to do is in general, when you Google something and if you put a clause, you will get, you will get a hit. Um, you can also define it a little bit more and you can say a relative clause and you will get a hit. And so uh, that's usually how it works. Uh, when you talk about a clause or a relative clause, it, it will be very, very specific, but at the same time, it will be, you know, kind of generalized to cover the most common use. And so the clause, as it stands in general terms, it's a group of words that includes a subject and a verb. And a clause functions as an adjective, an adverb, or a noun. So whenever you guys use a clause or you guys hear a clause, one of these terms is being used or, or, or it's taking over a subject, a verb, an adjective, an adverb or a noun, okay? And so how, how do you guys see that in a sentence? Well, a, a clause a functioning as an adjective, okay? And you guys will see it like this. My friend who has autism is, is brilliant at quizzes. And then so we have a subject and then we have the verb, okay? And then so here, here, is a group of words that functions as one part of speech and that includes a subject and a verb, which is what we just saw in terms of the definition, okay? Who, what, and when. Those are key pieces of references whenever you guys see a sentence. Because the next one that we see is a noun, a clause functioning as a noun. It's not a noun but it's acting as a noun. I cannot remember what happened last night. What is the subject? And then we have the verb, which is happened last night. And then, so now this way, it is actually, it is actually talking about, or is actually taking the form of a noun, okay? Number three, an adverb a clause functioning as an adverb, he put on weight when he stopped running. Here we have the subject and then we have the verb, okay? So these are the three examples. You have it or you see it being used as an adjective, you see it being used as a noun, and then you see it being used as an adverb. Simple way to look at it. There's a little bit more, right, when it comes to clauses. You guys will see, depending on the sentence, you guys will see some clauses that are, that are used a little bit different. For example, there's a case when you hear an independent clause or a dependent clause, okay? An independent clause is one that can stand alone as a sentence, so that means that you actually use a few words and it actually becomes a part of a sentence that can stand by itself, okay? And then there's a dependent clause. 
a dependent clause cannot stand by itself. It will need another portion to be able to function correctly in a sentence. So let me give you guys the examples that we have here, right? Whatever is highlighted in yellow is an independent clause. And what is not highlighted, then that is a dependent clause, okay? So you can come up to a friend and say, hey man, the patrol had spotted the sniper. And somebody will understand, oh my God, uh, there's a sniper. Uh, he probably shot somebody. Um, they probably caught him. They probably chased him. And so what this gives you is an idea of what's going on. And then you can kind of follow up, right? If you want to, if you want to ask, where was the sniper, right? You can follow that up with a question and it will work, okay? Now, the complete sentence reads like this. The patrol had spotted the sniper who was hiding in an attic. And this is the complete sentence. Okay, now you don't have to ask, where was he hiding? Porque ya te lo dijeron, right? You're not going to ask if he was caught because they, are, they already told you that he's been caught, right? They already saw him. They already know where he's at. Now, if you were to only read the dependent clause, then that leaves a lot of questions. Who was hiding in an attic? Y vos te le vas a quedar viendo y vos vas a decir, what? And the person who's telling you is going to look at you and he's going to say, what? Because the sentence makes no sense. All right. So you guys will also see it in that way. You guys will see two types of clauses. The independent clause, which stands by itself and it could be its very own sentence. And an, a dependent clause which means that it will need a second portion. It will need an explanation before it continues to become a sentence. So now, how do you see these clauses? We just saw them, right? Um, you can use them as nouns. You can use them as adjectives. In this one, in this particular example, we have an adverbial clause as well, okay? And then we have a quick explanation. An adverbial clause is a group of words that plays the role of an adverb. So it's actually the same thing used in, with different wordings, okay? Adverbial or adverb. And then you get the examples over here. An adverb of time states when something happens or how often. An adverb of time often starts with one of the following subordinate conju conjunctions. After, so when you guys see the words after, as, as long as, as soon as, before, no sooner than, since, until, when, or while, more than likely there's going to be an adverb or it's being used as an adverb, okay? I stopped believing in Santa Claus when my mother took me to see him in a department store and he asked me for my autograph and that was Shirley Temple. Ah, oh, Shirley Temple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, aquí está. Okay, okay. So now there are some phrases that you guys can look, well, you guys can use in, in terms of examples that contain relative clauses. So now these are examples of noun, noun phrases as a subject as, and as an object, which, you know, they're very, we actually use these pretty commonly. Something that I love is tasting different types of food. That, you see that? Something that I love is tasting different types of food. One thing that I'd be embarrassed about is speaking another language. And so here we are using clauses and we are using them as a noun because it is the subject. Someone who I'd miss is my best friend. Who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? The best friend, right? All right. You can be the object. Tasting different types of food is something that I'd love. 
speaking another language is one thing that I'd be embarrassed about. And you guys see how we incorporate that? My best friend is someone who I'd miss. Oh, so this one. Right. So as you guys can see, we have that, we have who, we use who or that, depending on what we're talking about. But that's usually how it falls. Let me give you guys another quick example of that. Okay. Now, everything that we're talking about has to do with clauses. And if you want to get specific with the clause, then these are relative clauses. Okay. And so with the relative clause, you guys will also hear terms of an adjective clause. And this is used to give additional info and it functions like an adjective. So if you guys look at the examples, we have the relative pronoun plus the subject plus the verb. We have the relative pronoun as a subject plus the verb, okay? So these are the examples that we're gonna use so that you guys can see it. And pasé toda la noche dibujando, compañeros. Así que no se me vayan a burlar de mis dibujitos porque ¿va? puede hacer de que toda mi carrera en este momento se acabe de enojado. All right. so, thank you, thank you very much, Madeline. Thank you. All right, so this is what we're gonna talk in regards to relative classes. So we see it, right? Tom is talking to a girl. And so, do you know the girl? Okay. So here is the breakdown. Okay. Do you know the girl who's talking to Tom? And so we incorporate who, and that is the relative pronoun. And that automatically turns the second half of that sentence into a relative clause because we used who Tommy's talking to a girl ¿Ah? ¿Mm? ¿Mm? es tu novio es tu novio está hablando con una muchacha ¿Mm? mira conoces a la muchacha con la que está hablando este Tom ¿Mm? do you know the girl who is talking to Tom y vos venís y le decís sí that's my sister oh right that's my sister. It's okay. Don't worry. Ma'am? Yes. Yes, Raf. In that case, um, could we say, do you know the girl who Tom is talking to? You can't, you can't say it, but you just have to remember that then, well, as long as you incorporate the who right before that, because remember that who will automatically turn the whole second half of that sentence into a relative clause. So, so it's okay for you to, to swap it around. So just be careful because you cannot always do it, Raf. Do you know the girl okay. who Tom is talking to? Question mark. Yes, you can do it because it makes sense. Whichever way you put it, it will make sense. Just be careful that you don't do that too often. All right. Okay. Now, another thing to take into consideration is whenever you ask a question that begins with who or what, there is something called inflation. Do you remember that, Raf? How when you're asking a question, the tone has to go up? And then depending on what you're asking, it, it will either go up or go down. And so that's that's another that's another I that's another I want to say that that's another topic. However, it comes into play because if you swap these around, the intonation, the inflation might change, right? And then it goes from being a uh, a normal question to possibly being a more aggressive way of asking maybe right because remember that tone has a really big play in how we how we ask questions 
I think I think we might be able to I think we might be able to see a little bit of that. I'll, I'll show it to you guys so that you can see what I'm talking about. All right. So in this particular case, we have the scenario, right? Tom is talking to a girl, and we're asking, "Do you know the girl?" Right. So how do we how do we make that or how do we use that and how do we turn it into a relative clause? Well, we incorporate who right before talking to Tom, right? And then ask the question. And then so we have the relative pronoun and then we have the relative clause. And so this should give you an idea of what's coming up next. So what are these relative pronouns? Oh, these. We we already we already know these, right? We already we have already seen these who, where, when, that or which, and whose. We only saw a couple of these like who, where, when, that. We didn't really go into which and whose, but they do exist, and people do use them whenever they come into this specific. Whenever when when we're talking about relative clauses, they are used. Okay, let me give you guys another example. And we're going to use who's on this one. So when we talk about who's, we talk about possession. We want to show the possession, right? The author whose book I just read is going to be in my town. Whose book is it? Whose book is it? His book, right? And then so whose lets you know the person we're talking about. Who are we talking about? The author. Whose book is it? His, right? And you can literally like, take a finger and point at it, okay? The boy whose ears are big is in my class. Who are we talking about here? His ears. Uh -huh. The woman whose cat bit me lives around the corner. Who are we talking about? Her cat. So whenever you guys use the word whose is because you want to talk about a table, a book, a pen, a cat, somebody's ear, somebody's nose. Okay. Who, where, when, that, which, and whose are the most common used relative pronouns. Okay, try another one. Actually, we already saw this one, right? The author whose book, and then we go back to whose book? His book, All right? The boy whose ears, whose ears? His ears. The woman's whose cat? What cat? Cuyo libro, el, el, el actor, su libro, right? ¿A quién le pertenece el libro? A él. Okay. Yeah. That. New York is the city that never sleeps. If you have a relative clause and you don't have a subject, then you use that. New York is the city that never sleeps. There's a good example of that. New York, where I went last year, is a great place. Ahí no podía ocupar that because we know that we're talking about New York. Okay. Here we go, let me show you guys. So if you guys are working on a relative clause and you guys see that there's no subject on there, you can use that. If there is a subject, then you guys can use either where, In this particular case, there is a subject, right? New York was the subject. New York, where I went last year, is a great place. And here we have those examples. Let's look at one more. Hey, 
His birthday, which is June, is his favorite day of the year. Which his birthday, when he turns 12 years old, is on Monday this year. And so these are the examples that we can use for which and the ones that we can use for when. Okay. All right. So just to, uh, to kind of go back a little bit here. Whenever you guys think of the rel uh, of the a relative clause, okay, you guys can think of the relative pronouns in terms of whether it's a defining clause or a non-defining clause. Okay, these are closely knit together. And if you guys look at the video, that's exactly what they talk about, right? Uh, there's also a portion where they give you guys a little, oh, that's the one, that's it. And so they, they also provide you guys with, I would say with a, with, a, with a board where you guys can see and use the different relative pronouns and which ones you can use as a defining, as a defining relative clause or when do you use them, right? If you're using as a subject, an object or a possessive, and these are the ones that you can use. When you come to a place, you can only use where. When it comes to time, you can only use when. And when you come to reason, you can only ask why. All right. Uh, let me see. Oh, I think I made it to. Teacher, see. I have yes. a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, will we go at the English Corporativo Institute on um, April 6th? Um, that is a fantastic question, Maddie. Um, I can definitely ask, you know, I haven't even asked about that. So was that April 6th? April 6th. April 6th. Okay. I will ask, are we going to class, right? All right. Are we going to class? No, will we go? You can, will we go to class? You can ask him, you can use both. Are will we, we go going to, to class or will we go to class? You can use both questions. They're both okay for you to use. Now, some people would add stuff like, will, will we be going to class on April 6th? Yeah. So, a little bit. so you can, you can, yeah, it's okay. You can use it like that as well. All right. So non-defining and defining relative clauses, you guys see a little bit here. Um, this is what we've been looking at in terms of the presentation and that's, I would say that that's the best way to look at them, right? Look at them in terms of general information whenever you come into relative clauses. Um, what you do have to remember is that these are the relative pronouns that you have to use, okay? In order to turn that into a relative clause, these are the relative pronouns, and depending on which one you use, it's either defining or non-defining, okay? All right, so... They also talk about that here and give you a little bit of information. And, and I think there's like an exercise that you guys have to do. Yeah. So she says, relative answer. pronouns. Maddie, Maddie. You didn't answer my question. Will we go to class on April 6th? Yeah, I told you that I was going to ask. Ah, uh, yeah because I have not asked. But I like the Institute, it's very, it's a 
a wonderful place. The, I, the, the classroom? Okay. Yeah. I saw, you know what? I've only seen it in pictures and it does look really nice. Really open, really big classrooms. So I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys want to go to class? How many would like to go to class? Raise your hand. I know that some of you guys are, are really far off. I'm really far. I'm really far. So I would have to drive La Homer all the way up to. ¿A dónde está Madeline? Creo que en la escalón, ¿verdad? Yes, in the escalón. In the escalón, yeah. I to receive the class in the institute. I like oh. it. So okay. Much. Yeah, yeah. It was. I, I remember. I remember seeing something like that. All right. Okay. We are going to keep moving on. Uh, we had a question about the knowledge check 3.5. Here it is. And so this one was a listening exercise, but it was proving. I think it was giving some errors. Right, Henry. Uh, I think in three three dot two. Um, Let's go I back. I made I made two answers uh, right, but four are wrong. Okay. Uh, but in three dot five, I don't know how to um, input the answer. Okay. Because I, I put a paragraph and then I put a, a, like in a like on a list all the features that the audio requires, but uh, is marked wrong. Okay. Okay. All right. We can definitely look at that. So let's quickly input the information. So let's see. Uh, using the magic button that we have, I had not had a chance to do this one at all. So we're going to straight up use the magic button. We had used it before, right? It's all for science, everybody. It's all for science. Let me go ahead and input it there. Okay, now let's go and review. So it says, read the following sentence, identifies the relative clause. Oh, identifying the relative clause. Then rewrite the same sentence, add commas where necessary, and remember capital letters and periods. Oh, so this one, this one becomes a little bit harder because they're asking you to use commas. They're asking you to use uh, the um, capital letters, so caps, and the period. And the periods. Yeah, so so this one becomes a little bit more complicated because if you don't add any of those, it automatically gives you a wrong answer, even though it is correct. So what happens is that um, in the video right before this one, they tell you that if you are going to use, uh, for example, a subject, right, or the object, then you have to make sure that you guys use the commas. Uh, the period is the dot, uh, the little dot that we use. I'm going to spell it out, dot. Y es el punto, punto, punto y coma. Creo que decía el, el chespirito. Okay, so here it starts off with Bangkok, the city. And because Bangkok is the city, we have a comma. Now we have something to talk about, which is the capital of Thailand. And then so if you're using Thailand, you need to put that T. And then it stops with a comma, has many excellent restaurants and markets, dot. Okay. Same thing. Let me see. Where else do we see that? Well, you actually have to implement it throughout. Hong Kong was a British colony until 1997, comma. And then we have the when it was returned to China. Busan is a busy port city, comma, that is located in South Korea. Bogota, comma, which is situated on a high plateau in central Colombia, comma, has frequently changing weather. 
Montreal is a sophisticated city, comma, where some of the best cuisine in Canada is found. So let's see, we have Bangkok, and then we use the relative clause. So we have to put a comma right before it. Here, we start off with Hong Kong, but the, 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 the word or the phrase that we're using is was a British colony until 1997. And then, so then we get the, we get the comma all the way up to after 1997. And Sao Paulo, the city, there the follow-up word is which. So if you guys notice, whenever you guys see the relative clause right before it, right, we need a comma. When that which where and which again. Now be careful with the spelling on the cities, Bogota. I'm thinking that it's also gonna ask you for that little thing on top of the A, what, what is that? I, I can't remember what that, is that apostrophe? It's not an apostrophe, right? Por ejemplo, cuando decís Bogota en español. Let's see. La tilde. Tilde, thank you very much. So is that, so is that, Apostrophe? No. Is it the same thing? No. 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 It's just, used, different. It's just used it's different. different. It's just okay. All right. I'll Google that. I have to find out. Okay. Let me go ahead and click submit. Henry, did did this help? Yeah, I think. But I making some answers like that. And still uh, not working. But it, but the error is still. The platform is still. Uh, returning error okay in so, which sentence excuse me Henry did you uh, have the error by example uh, I was putting the answer in the question five Montreal is a sophisticated city comma where some of the best cuisine in Canada is found but because it that is not of this form. <laughs> it has a mistake. So Montreal is a sophisticated city, comma. Teacher. Yes. Uh, I have the same problem uh, that Henry. Mm -hmm. And now <laughs> If you in the number four, if you put a no, if you don't put a, a space between Bogota, a comma, and which a, it is correct. Teacher, look nice. at the answer of the number mm. five. There is number. a mistake. So Montreal answer. is a sophisticated city where some foe, <laughs> some mm. foe. Oh, I see what you. Where some of the instead of of yeah, so this and is an error. The answer doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, you got it, Raf. That's it. Okay. I think yeah, you got I it. I will try. I will try. And four. it is the same mistake in the and in the in the original sentence. If you see. Yes. Yeah, yes, they they did right. the same thing. Thank you. Let me go ahead and put it like this. It's okay. <laughs> well, okay. let me see. Uh, I don't know how to put that one without. Ah, uh, it still gave it to me as, which is, oh, I see what you mean. So let's put it without. There it is. <laughs> okay, so Bogota, and then if you put a space after the which, it gives it to you wrong. That's one thing that you guys should look into. All right, we got that one, we got that one. All right, and then the next one, Henry, 3.5, right? 3.5. 3.5. And then so with this one, we did the same. You did the same thing. Um, in the question two. Question number two. Yeah, you have, have to, to type the features uh, that Carlos and I don't know. I don't remember how the girls 
listen again, type in the city features that Carlos and Vicky. So I'm thinking that it's going to be climate. Well, it's telling me that, right? that it's our architecture, landmarks, nightlife, and cuisine. Let's see. Let's type it in. So Henry, you have to put them like that. Climate, comma, space, architecture, comma, space, landmarks, comma, space, nightlife, comma, space, cuisine, dot. I don't even remember okay. if I put the dot. Let me see. Now, if it still doesn't work after that, Henry, more than likely is an issue with the platform. Okay, okay. All right, and don't worry about that. We can get it fixed. Thank you. Let me see here. All right, so it accepted it. Try it like that, Henry, and see if it works. Okay, thank you very much. All right, let me go ahead and put a picture on here like that. I don't know if it's really gonna help. All right, any any other one that you guys wanna look at? You guys got it? Okay. If you guys, yeah, let me go ahead. Yo aquí tomándome la selfie, va, así como que, tomándome la selfie. Chacar. Puro señor veterano, como, como, y esto cómo se usa, y esto cómo se usa. Ay, este, you know what? That's the problem with these iPhones. It's just terrible. IPhone, iPhone 10 XM, no, hombre, no, 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 demasiado. All right, let me see if I can post those together for us. Oh, actually, I sent one already. All right, so, ladies and gents, let me go ahead and this is the one. It's very tiny, but you guys can enlarge it a little bit. Hopefully, it helps out. We're going to leave these as it. And then, so for tomorrow, hopefully we can continue from 3.5 and complete the whole module and then start section number four for next week or getting ready for next week. Um, as you guys can see, most of the information that you guys have to work with uh, in this particular module has to do with uh, the relative clauses, right? So give it a look. Um, make sure you guys watch the videos and make sure you guys also complete as much as you can. Uh, let me go ahead and add. There we go. There we go. Josue, got you. Got you. Let me go ahead and add. I want to send. Let me see. I had some emails I had to send. I had Diana that I had not sent it yet. Here you go. Test. I sent you my email, teacher. I saw it. Thank you so much. And let me go ahead and add that on there. And that should be okay. So if you guys receive an email from me, that is an email to confirm. Uh, let me see. I didn't send it to Luis, so let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and send it your way, Luis. Josue already had. Okay. Termino mandándole como diez a Luis. All right. <laughs> to me, please. M Araya, that's that's yours, right, Mary? Maraya. 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 Okay. Got it. I sent it. I sent it already. Aquí está, mira. All right. Ladies and gents, that is it for tonight. Uh, it's Wednesday. Tomorrow is our Thursday or our Friday. Eh, jueves de amigo, viernes de locos. Así que prepárense, <laughs> por favor, amigo. Have a good night. Uh, fantastic having you guys on here. And see you guys tomorrow. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good night. I want to work. Back to work.
Yes.